Hello everyone, my name is Adam. I am one of the audiologists at Alto Hearing. I'm back today to bring you another earwax removal from our independent hearing clinic in Lutterworth, UK. We have a few different videos coming in this episode. We've got this first one and then we're going to revisit a person we saw a few weeks ago who has psoriasis and was back in again. And then I've got a little nugget at the end as well, which is definitely worth sticking around for. As always, if you do enjoy these videos, please give us a like and click subscribe. It really makes a huge difference. So, ear candles. Right. Now, I've done videos on ear candles before and it's always a subject that for some reason I feel I have to tread a little bit lightly around as it doesn't seem to matter what evidence, or that should probably be lack of evidence, you present. People seem to be very opinionated about them. But I'm going to move away from treading too lightly on this subject from now on as for some weird reason, the popularity of these ear candles seems to be increasing. Now, as a clinician who is trained in evidence-based healthcare, I'm not actually completely against alternative therapies, even if there is a substantial black hole of evidence for them. And when I say evidence, I don't mean some bloke called Keith off a Facebook group who tried something once and it worked for him, so it must be true. Alternative therapies do have their place and we can argue until the sun comes down about whether it's a placebo effect or not but even if a remedy has a placebo effect then great it's helping someone with a problem the fact that it's a placebo doesn't really make a difference at all if it's making them feel better my problem with alternative therapies is when they become dangerous now just stop and think about hopi ear candles for just a second you're lighting a candle in your ear like your head is some sort of birthday cake. You're putting a rolled up piece of paper in your ear canal and setting fire to it. Does it sound like a good idea to you? Of course it doesn't. It sounds like something a drunk university student would do. But for some reason, alternative medicine has got a hold of these things and I'm seeing loads of healthcare businesses offer them as a solution for earwax or sinus pressure and things like that. It's nonsense. Like, Really, there is literally zero evidence that they work. There will be people who watch this video where I'm showing you a case where they haven't worked and completely blocked up someone's ear far worse than prior to using an ear candle. And they will comment below and they will say things like, oh, this guy just did it wrong or it's physics and it's been around for thousands of years successfully. That was an actual comment, by the way. It's not physics. If you were able to create a vacuum using a candle strong enough to pull out a piece of earwax from the ear, the pressure you'd have to create would rupture the eardrum immediately. I went to a well-known high street retailer to buy a few of these candles um, some months ago for a video we were doing. I asked the lady behind the counter, do these really work? And she looked at me slightly confused, shrugged her shoulders and said, well, they might be worth a try. They know what's up but they still sell them for 10 quid a pack and bear zero responsibility if you happen to burn your house down by accident. Anyway, so this man came in, he'd never had earwax removal before and he'd given Hopi ear candles a go. Surprise, surprise, they didn't work. In fact, they just made it worse. Now, there's like two layers to this earwax in his ear. It's like the first is a layer of what is actually paper from the candle and we assume the beeswax or whatever that was inside. We thought he might have been using cotton buds because it does look a little bit like cotton, but afterwards we had a proper look and it was paper. It was rock solid too and it took us a long time to get out. It was causing a lot of discomfort for him and of course he wasn't able to hear anything. So then underneath to this, lo and behold, was the mass of earwax he was trying to get out in the first place. This also took us a little while to remove. We had to use a bit of irrigation in the end, but we got there. So the next bit is just us cleaning the actual earwax out of the ear canal before we move on to the other side that was also full of earwax. Just back to the Hopi ear candles thing again, because I know that people will say they have been used in their families for centuries and our ears have always been fine. I'm not trying to say you're lying. You may feel great after using a Hopi ear candle, but it has zero evidence to suggest that it works. And there is some evidence to suggest that it's dangerous. Exhibit A, or A, is completely blocked this person's ear, but also you risk hot wax falling inside the ear. If it did work, you would see audiologists and other clinicians up and down the country using it. There is a reason 
you only find it in the places that you do. Now, if you don't like this or you disagree with me, absolutely fine, but please bring me the evidence, not anecdotes. You'll have heard other clinicians on YouTube and maybe in other places talk about earwax removal in the UK. It is unregulated. So when you see someone doing earwax removal for 20 pounds, they literally could have bought the tools off eBay and just put an advert up on Facebook. There is such little protection for you, the general public, when it comes to your hearing health. And so we as clinicians feel the need to take responsibility and educate and inform. It's important. So I encourage you when someone tells you about how great Hope ear candles are to tell them to give their head a wobble. So this is the person's other ear. Funnily, it looks like they didn't bother using a candle on this side, which did make it a lot easier as we didn't have to bury through a load of that paper. We did have to go in and irrigate though. When we use irrigation, sometimes it's a tool on its own to remove the earwax, and then sometimes it's something we use alongside microsuction, like in this case. We've got two different types of irrigators. We have the big one called the irrigator, which is pretty cool, and you can see a video on that. And then there's the one Maria uses here, which is a smaller one that sort of pulses water in. Both are quite effective, and it's definitely helped us out in making it easier to remove. Maria's just using the tools here very gently. At this point, the patient had been through a bit of an ordeal with the other side, so Maria is being super gentle and reassuring. It does take a bit of time to get uh, a little bit of movement on it, but eventually she manages. Just a quick update on Maria, by the way, because she's been working with us full time now for a little while. Her clinic is now pretty much fully booked every week and the feedback she's been getting from everyone has been absolutely awesome. She's been incredible to work with and we feel very privileged to have her experience in our clinic. You know, coming to a new country when you've been working as a doctor in your homeland, having to learn a language, and then there's the constant fear of what's going on at home with the war. She's just unbelievable. She's one of the strongest women I've ever met. So a quick shout out for her, she's been an absolute superstar for us. You might remember if you watch this channel a lot that a few weeks ago we had a lady in who suffered from psoriasis. Now we had a pretty difficult time removing the keratin buildup in her ears and we're not sure if this is connected to the psoriasis or not but it would seem likely there's a lot of skin buildup in her ear. Now in less than a month this lady was back in again complaining that once again she was unable to hear so it seems in no time at all if you have a look at this She's built up quite a significant skin plug in her ear. So once again, Maria got to work helping her out. Now, in the last video with this lady in it, we got quite a lot of people asking us why we weren't using specific tools or why we just seemed to be plugging away, seemingly not making any progress. The thing is with this lady is that she has an extremely low pain tolerance for this type of procedure. We're just having to be super careful and super slow with it it might not look like we're making any progress as we're going along, but we are. Every little pull with the forceps, every little bit of movement is helping until eventually we can migrate this skin plug out. It looks like it should be easy, but it isn't. We aren't using any anesthetic in the ear, and when it's deep and in the bony portion of the ear canal, especially with a skin plug, it can be incredibly tender anyway. So slowly and carefully is always the preferred route. Constantly talking to the patient, constantly reassuring them and almost using the pain as a way of understanding the limits of what we can do. That sounds a lot worse than it actually is. What I mean is we use the feedback from the patient in cases like this to understand how far to pull or what type of tool is going to work. It looks a lot simpler, as I say, than it, it actually is. And actually, I've seen clinicians previously where they can get a little bit impatient or their arm starts hurting and you end up becoming a bit rushed and that's when mistakes happen. When you're doing endoscopic microsuction like this, you're really doing three or four things at once. You're holding the endoscope, you're bracing the patient, you're controlling the zona tube or the tool and you're talking and communicating with them. This is why some clinicians prefer not to do endoscopic earwax removal. It certainly isn't the easiest or the most comfortable way for the professional, but 
from our perspective, it gives us the clearest view. And that's what's important. It optimizes the results we can achieve. It also, of course, allows us to record the videos, but this isn't just to upload them uh, to YouTube. It also allows us to keep these procedures on file so we can revert back to them. Only today we had a patient in who had quite a significant infection and when she got home she noticed that there was some facial weakness and wondered if it was related to her coming in to see us. Now, having recording on file of the procedure allows us to go back and look at the procedures and in this case we were able to see clearly there was nothing we had done that could have caused this. It's better to be safe than sorry though, right? And we also use the recordings too for reflective practice and to train our clinicians and to have a look at the work we've done to see where we can improve. Now eventually with this one we start to get a little bit of movement and as you can see we get a huge keratin sleeve come out of this ear. This is pretty massive and we couldn't believe it when we saw it. The patient once again was super delighted and I'm sure we'll be seeing this lady again pretty soon. And she has been seen by other medical specialists uh, as well, just in case you're wondering. So finally, before I go, I just wanted to show you this quick little one. Uh, it's just the last one for today. This lady had been to see her GP and was told she was blocked up with earwax and to use some olive oil. Now she was still feeling really blocked up though and lightheaded and she came in to see us. We didn't find any earwax in the ears, but what we did find is what looks like two pretty large perforations. You can really clearly see the damage to the eardrums both sides here. For this lady, it was an immediate referral and she'll be seeing ENT very soon to get this addressed. So thanks so much for tuning in. We will be back very soon with more procedures. Don't forget to subscribe if you like the content and please do give the channel a like. We love posting these videos and hearing from you in the comments. Take care.